What's going on everybody? My name is Michael Weir and we are counting down the top 10 best movies from the year 2021. This is a hard list to make. I'll be honest with you guys. I see a lot of movies every year. You guys know that. I review a lot of movies every year, but there's a lot of movies that I don't review. Like, especially this year, I was like, if it didn't make me want to, to do a review, then I'm really not going to review it. And I've put out content pretty steadily for the last six months, and I'm pretty proud of myself for that. So coming down with this list, it was hard to, it was easy to make a worst. I'll be honest with you guys, easy to make a worst. That video will be out next. But the best of was harder to make because I was like, okay, I know I got a locked in one and two. It's harder on the rest. But before we jump into that list of top 10 best movies of the year, we have to talk about my honorable mentions. My honorable mentions are the movie Nobody, starring Bob Odenkirk, in a John Wick style movie, which I never thought could happen. I left this movie with a smile. It came out right at the beginning of the year, and I, it was a great way to kick off 2021. The next movie came out later in 2021. It just came out like a month ago, actually, and that is Ghostbusters Afterlife. Honorable mention to Ghostbusters Afterlife, because while the beginning of the movie was pretty slow, I did enjoy the payoff of the original Ghostbusters at the end of that movie it was a good time overall and finally Godzilla versus Khan Godzilla versus Khan is an honorable mention because it brought Godzilla and King Khan to the stage and it did it perfectly yes there were a lot of flaws in that movie which is why I couldn't get it on the list I had it on the list for a minute and then some other things came out that bumped it off but uh the reason why it didn't get on the list my main reason is because how do they knock out Khan every single time they need to transport him it's just a glaring issue I had but overall the fight scenes with Khan and Godzilla and that special third monster that I'll leave out in case somebody hasn't seen it ah, you know what spoilers Mecha Godzilla, they did him perfectly. I loved this movie. I thought they did a great job, but it just wasn't good enough to get into my best of. Now, with the honorable mentions out of the way, guys, we got to talk about one more thing, and that is that my list will not be the same as your list. It's how it works. My top 10 of the year are not going to be your top 10 of the year. So remember that when you get into the comment section and let me know what your top 10 were and why you thought your top 10 were the best movies of the year. And I'm going to go ahead and give you my list right now. But first... Beer leaf tea. Keeps me going. Coming in at number 10, guys, is the first new movie I saw this year. When I saw it, I knew it was going to get somewhere on my best of list, and it sure did. It just made it in at number 10, Willy's Wonderland, starring Nicolas Cage, a role where he doesn't say a single word. I love this movie. Nicolas Cage runs around the movie, killing off theme park monsters not even theme park, theme restaurant monsters, happy birthday monsters. It's ridiculous. And I think one of the things that put it on my list to get it into that top 10 when it finally came down is I remembered when I saw it, I had a bunch of friends over to my house. I watched it in on VOD and the look on their faces for the movie I had invited them over to see was just, it was worth it. I had a great time with Lily's Wonderland and I know you will too if you check it out. At number nine, guys, Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead. Yeah, you thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? Army of the Dead made it onto this list. It's another one that went straight to Netflix. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. Here's why I recommend it. We've all seen zombie movies before. We've all seen heist movies before. But it is a zombie movie with a heist movie and just a shit ton of badasses crammed into one. Yeah, Dave Bautista goes into Las Vegas to raid a vault of the, the final money that's in that vault. At the same time... There's zombies everywhere. It's a great premise. It's a great idea. I love how they ended it. And it spawned a prequel, Army of Thieves, which, fun fact, I've watched half of. Couldn't keep my attention, but I will go back and watch it. For my money, though, number nine is Army of the Dead. Next up, guys, we have The Tomorrow War. Another VOD. I know, this one went directly to Amazon Prime. I had a great time with The Tomorrow War starring Chris Pratt. A movie about a bunch of aliens and time travel. It reminded me of Edge of Tomorrow, but it was a complete story where I still feel like there's more of Edge of Tomorrow we can get into. I felt like this was a complete story. Or then again, actually, I guess you could see more. The point I'm making is I really enjoyed this movie. Now that I'm thinking about it again, J.K. Simmons was in this too, and he was awesome. I loved that scene at the end. I won't spoil it for you, but it is on Amazon Prime. Number eight, The Tomorrow War. At number seven, Zack Snyder's name comes up again because it's Zack Snyder's cut of the Justice League. That's right, we got it. I was amazed that we actually got this movie. Another straight to VOD, by the way. It's right on, on uh, HBO. Wow. 
Yeah, a lot of my movies apparently went to streaming. That's weird. But the point is, dude, Zack Snyder's Justice League was a dream that none of us thought we would actually get. We all bitched about it on Twitter. We bitched about it on social media. We said, we need this. We want it in our lives. And they gave it to us to promote HBO Max. But who cares? I rewatched it again the other day as I was putting this list together. And there was no way I could leave it off the list. What Where Justice League failed in 2017... Zack Snyder's Justice League improved. I loved everything about it, and I want more. Please give me more Snyderverse. I don't know what I have to do to get it, but I need more Snyderverse. So again, at number seven, Zack Snyder's The Justice League. Coming at number six, guys, Halloween Kills. Now, if you know me, you know I was hyped to see this movie. I was so hyped that I had friends and family go with me to a private showing to see Halloween Kills. The private showing was a gift, but the point is... I got to see this without a theater around me. It was in October. I loved every second of it. I couldn't get it higher in this list just because of the other movies. I just I couldn't force it there. There were some plot holes in it. But when he goes crazy at the end of that movie and gets up and takes out that crowd, that's all I wanted. And I loved what I got. So Halloween Kills comes in at number six. And I'm just going to throw this in there. I'm already hyped for Halloween ends next year. So now we got to start the top five, guys. And the top five at number five is The Suicide Squad. James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. My God. You know, when I think about this movie, I didn't think I'd leave the theater thinking about John Cena and Idris Elba. Like, I thought, okay, I'll think about Harley Quinn and, and maybe whatever the starfish thing is. John Cena and Idris Elba in this movie. Oh, my God. But that's really not all there was. There's the Ratcatcher lady and her dad, the Ratcatcher 1 and 2, and the story they have. Like, that's a really good, heartfelt story. And at the same time, you got John Cena just being incredible, whether it's badass or funny. And that scene with the guerrilla warfare people and you've got the Suicide Squad basically just showing off their talents the payoff of that scene the scene is cool but the payoff of that scene is one of the best scenes we got all year so number five the suicide squad at number four guys was an end of a james bond era no time to die no time to die finished off daniel craig's run as james bond and i was just loving it in the theater and afterwards i like drove home in silence well back to my hotel i was on the road at the time but I drove back to my hotel in silence. I did laundry in silence. I just had to process the movie. I loved every second of it. And it was so much fun. And the ending, spoilers here, but they kill James Bond. No Bond movie has ever dared to do that before. And I couldn't believe that they did it. I was so happy that they made that choice because I really just, it finished off Daniel Craig's run as Bond without a little question mark. I will say the one downer, for this movie, for me personally, is that they said James Bond will return at the end. I know that's a classic 007 shtick, but I, I just I wish they would have said 007 because it would have left us all wondering, ooh, will they just not recast James Bond? Because then you could have it be anyone. I just thought that would be cool. They didn't. They said James Bond. So clearly we're going to get a new James Bond and James Bond will continue forever and ever and ever. And one day when I'm dead and gone, James Bond will continue with someone else because that is just James Bond. But we got it. No Time to Die is my number four movie this year. Number three and number two, I've been tossing back and forth all week as I put this list together, but I had to go with number three, A Quiet Place Part Two. That's right, A Quiet Place Part Two, starring Emily Blunt and Killian Murphy, John Krasinski directed and starred in a little bit. You know, he was in the flashback scenes. This was a great movie to return to theaters with. It came out early April or late March, I believe. And it was just one of those where it's like, well, how many people are going back? I'll tell you what, if I could ask for a theater that I didn't have to rent out and had very few people in it, it would have been for A Quiet Place Part 2 because there's so much quietness in the movie. Now, there, I will say this. There's a lot more talking in this movie than there is in the original. The original, while I liked it, it wasn't my favorite movie of the year, even though I liked it because it had it was just so, so slow going and so quiet the entire time. And when it finally all happens at the end, it's a really good movie, but it just took its time. Whereas this one didn't really take its time. It went fast. I enjoyed it. The The rush was good. And anytime you had an alien in the background with that girl and her messed up hearing aid, that was awesome. I have to go with A Quiet Place Part 2 as my number three movie this year. All right, guys, number two. Now, number two and number one, I saw both movies twice this year. Both movies impacted me on a level I didn't think they would. Well, one of them I thought they would, and that is my number two. So we're just going to jump into it, and that is Spider-Man No Way Home. I was so hyped for this movie. I was texting my friends and snapping my friends like a week in advance every day leading up to that movie. Videos of Spider-Man, pictures of Spider-Man, 
stuff about Spider-Man. Like, I was just so hyped about Spider-Man. It is my favorite Marvel superhero. And so to get a movie of this scale and the spoilers that we could go on about in this. You just have to go watch my spoiler review that I put up. But I loved Spider-Man No Way Home. It was not only worth the hype, but it exceeded the hype in my opinion. Spider-Man No Way Home is my second favorite movie this year. And finally guys, the best movie of 2021. You heard it here first. I think the best movie of 2021 is the Last Duel. The Last Duel starring Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Jody Comier, and Adam Driver, directed by Ridley Scott. Oh my god, guys, I bought this the second I could on 4K. I brought it home and I popped it in and I watched it for a third time this year. I loved The Last Duel. The Last Duel, it is emotional, it deals with horrific, tragic events, and in the end, it has you on the edge of your seat. Tell me any movie that did that to you this year and I, you, you'll you have me stumped because no other movie did that to me. This movie did that and I was shocked that it was able to do that. Like I went into it like I was looking forward to it. I love this so much that as soon as I got home from my work trip, I told my wife, I was like, we got to see this. And we went and saw it together. She loved it. As soon as I bought it, we watched it together again. I love this movie, the messaging. It's just perfect in my opinion. You know, a lot of people have been giving the Green Knight, you know, in their top 10 or their favorites this year. And that's fine. That's their opinion. I'm glad they've got one. But a lot of people putting the Green Knight up there because of the visuals. The visuals in The Last Duel are phenomenal. Not just the sword and sandal fights that happen within the movie, but overall and throughout. Like, especially The Last Duel. The duel itself. Oh my goodness. The visuals in that are great. And the way they end that fight... Come on, you haven't seen a better fight. That rivaled just about everything we saw in Game of Thrones. That's how good that last fight was. I love The Last Duel. It is my favorite movie from the year 2021. And Michael Weir thinks that it is the best movie of 2021. And guys, those are my thoughts of the best movies from the year 2021. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit the like button and the share button so your friends can see it. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. And again, if you've got a different list, which I'm sure you do, of your favorite movies, you don't even have to have 10. Your favorite movies that you got to see in 2021. We'll put those in the comment section down below and let's talk about them. I love talking about favorite movies. It's a good time. And coming up next is my worst of movies from the year 2021. So look out for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.